go Kara first and then I'll lead it back to you. Yep, go for it. All right, this week what we, in our box we have pea shoot tendrils, uh, scallions, uh, Easter egg radishes, shiga turnips from the prefecture that we had actually gone to a couple years ago when we visited Japan with the side yard farm. We have the first cut of our silky salad, which we are thrilled about, and some spring garlic. Cool, all right, so getting started on that, today we're gonna make a couple dishes and we'll have some recipes posted on both the Nightwood Society's website as well as with Fiber Valley Farms on how you can make use of all of this beautiful box. So we're gonna do, as I said, we're gonna do two dishes and one is gonna be a roasted radish dish. One of my favorite things to eat are radishes, so now is the time for them. Um, and then we're gonna make a baked, a baked halloumi with a piece, piece, uh, you're doing great. We can redo that. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna make um, baked halloumi with a pea tendril salsa on top of it with uh, some sunflower seeds and lemon zest and olive oil. So to get started, I'm gonna go ahead and roast off my radishes. These radishes have been quartered and seasoned with a little bit of salt and black pepper and just a little bit of olive oil enough to coat them. We're gonna throw them in the oven at 500 degrees for five to six minutes. You're looking to just get a little color on the outside. You wanna maintain the structure of the radish so it's still a little crunchy without overcooking it. So I'm gonna start with that. I'm gonna put that in the oven. And while we're waiting for this to cook, I'm gonna start by separating my, um, my pea tendrils. So uh, we're gonna do, it's gonna be half fresh, half grilled salsa on top. So I'm gonna take, the, take half and put it aside. And then the half that I'm gonna grill, I'm gonna cut the bottoms off because the bottoms sometimes are just a little bit uh, woody and tough. Um, these ones happen to be incredibly tender. Ooh. And you can eat them raw. Um, but I'm just gonna be, for the, for the sake of the salsa, I'm gonna take a little bit off the bottom and I'm gonna throw them on my grill dry. And that means no oil on top. You just wanna get it colored. You don't wanna add any, um, if it has oil on it, you'll have the potential to light them up and get it um, charred that is like a weird flavor. So we just are gonna go on dry with some of our scallions and our pea tendrils. And we're gonna cook those just until they are tender and have a nice like blackness, but not um, not too not too much. And then I'm gonna take care of my bowl. Quick question, Chef. So oh, if yes. someone wasn't, maybe they didn't have a grill at their house, what would you suggest in their home? You can also do similarly, you can just pop them into the oven. Again, a high temperature, 500, 550 degrees for um, five, like five minutes, just enough to get them nice and dark on the outside, and then you can use it just the same way. And it should get a little bit of color without steaming it too much. Make sure to put it on your sheet tray in one level, not on top of each other. So equal cooking. All right, so then we're gonna take our, the remainder of our pea tendrils, and we're gonna kind of just chop them up. Sort of making a set, like, you know, nice and thin julienne. And the flowers can get cut up, the tops, the whole thing. Kind of just trying to make it one same shape throughout the whole thing. All right, delicious. Something that's really exciting about this that I wanted to mention within our CSA is that many of the vegetables that we're going to be offering, we can use the whole plant. If it's the tops of the garlic or the bulbs of the garlic, if it's all the, the pea um, stems, the leaves, the flowers. We have a lot of opportunity here to really like get to know our, the entire plant. And so that's something that we really like about what, um, what Princess is doing today with the, with is the dish. The whole utilization of what we're, we're going for. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kara. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, my greens, are, the pea tendrils, are, everything's gonna cook up really quickly. So by the time you're done chopping up your vegetables, make sure to keep an eye on it. Voila, already nice and charred, but not overcooked. So you can see that it's got a nice little color. It's slightly cooked the greens, and we're good to go. Those pea tendrils cook up pretty fast, but the scallions will let go just a little while longer. All right, so and then we're gonna put in our bowl our chopped up pea tendrils. And these are super good to eat just by themselves. Like, 
grilled with just a little salt, pepper, and a little squeeze of lemon juice is super delicious. And notice that it's a rough chop. You don't have to be super like <sighs> everything the same. Just kind of cut it up into pieces. Don't be stressed on the shape. All right, then we're gonna mix that with our fresh. All right, let's see how our scallions are doing. And I've pre um, um, uh, sweated some of the spring garlic. And sweating means basically cooking it in a little bit of fat with no color. This one has a little bit of color, but you just want it to be tender enough to kind of take out the texture of raw garlic and the, the harshness that kind of comes with garlic in general. So it sort of mellows it out enough, which will be really delicious to add on to our salsa. All right, so I'm just gonna throw that in there. And this is gonna be one of the stocks that we have in the box this week. All right. And I'm not, again, not using all the scallions that we have in the box, just a couple of them to add to this. And it's just adding a little bit of extra delicious, like, allium -y flavor. Chop those up, again, still kind of rough. And get all those good charred pieces in there, too. Throw that in the mix. All right, and then I've taken some shallot and macerated it, which means kind of just like small diced it and soaked it in um, a little bit of champagne vinegar to add acid to our bunch. So I'm gonna kind of add that to it as well, just kind of taking out just the shallot and leaving the vinegar on the side. We'll add more of that to it later. All right, um, and then while we're getting ready, because almost everything's in here, I'm gonna take our halloumi. So halloumi is a goat and sheep's milk cheese that is um has a super high heating point so you can grill it you can pan sear it you can uh throw it in your salamander or your uh, broiler so that's sort of what i'm going to be doing today is we're going to broil it so it'll just get nice and color without melting and oozing out all over the place it'll stay pretty stable in its shape so i'm going to do that you're going to want to put it under your broiler for about at the height for about five to six minutes or until it gets great color right underneath. And then for folks that might not eat dairy or even know what halloumi is, I love it grilled, um, you can put this on meat, you can put this on broccoli rob, you can, you can, I mean, there's so many options. We just wanted to show you the different ways that we can be utilizing something as beautiful as this. All right. So then I'm gonna take the zest of one lemon. This one's kind of big, so I'm only gonna use half of it. So a zest of one normal size, not gigantic, beast of a lemon inside this mixture as well. And I've pre-toasted um, some sunflower seeds, and these were just a little bit of a little bit of olive oil in the oven for at 300 degrees, just till they're kind of nice and golden, and then a rough chop on top of them. So I'm going to add about a, a quarter of a cup. All right, and then we're gonna take a little bit of a nice finishing oil or olive oil that you have. Make sure these are the oils that you're not cooking with. These are just oils that are super delicious and flavorful. This is Oil Verde, one of my favorites. I'm pretty sure you can get it at Real Good Food, which is in Northeast Portland, and it's um, one of my favorite finishing oils. It has so much flavor and tastes like grass and delicious product. So we're gonna add enough of this oil to cover all of the ingredients. And by cover, I mean just like, you know, enough, not too much. All right, and then we're just gonna add a little bit of um, Aleppo pepper, pinch, times two, a little black pepper, because I love it, and a little bit of a pinch of toasted ground cumin. Mix this all together, and you notice that this is like, this salsa is super about the peat tendrils, not as much about the sunflower seeds, but really about it as well. And now that we've added all of our green, we're going to add a little bit of the champagne vinegar that we had left over. When you add this, it's going to change, it'll um, acidulate the salsa, which if you keep it too long, it'll start to brown everything. So you can add this at the last minute. Just add a little, like about a tablespoon. Beautiful chef. All right, let's check on our cheese. Give it a 
turn. Four more minutes. And yeah, that's it. A yummy, delicious um, salsa. It's pea tendril Incredible. salsa with scallions and sunflower seeds. Pretty I simple. love the idea of it being fresh and grilled because it like really shows the complexity of something that can be so simple. Yeah, which I think is, is nice to play with. It's nice to eat. Yeah, Look. and then so while we're waiting for that to our cheese to finish melting, we're gonna go ahead and check on our radishes. Oh look, they're done. Bravo! Um, just kidding. Uh, through the magic of TV, we have some roasted radishes here, and again, you can see with the consistency that they're still firm. So they have a little bit of caramelization on here, but for the most part, they're gonna be still nice and hard and crunchy. And that's, pers that's how I like it. No need to make a mushy. So we're gonna take this and put this in a bowl to mix it up. All right, and then we're gonna take some of um, our shiga turnips. And these things are so magical because you can, do, you can eat them anyway. They're good raw, they're good cooked. I thought um, today would be a nice way to have them with a nice crunchy texture. So I have a mandolin here. If you don't have one of these at home, you just can just cut it with a knife. And mandolins are good because they'll have even cutting throughout the whole thing. And it's pretty fast. So I'm just gonna mandolin a couple pieces, little rings. And you can find a mandolin anywhere. They're affordable. Yeah. That very one is awesome. I have that at home too. And they're just kind of fun to have. Um, and again, if you don't, then you know, do what's comfortable for you as far as cutting it. You might have to cut them in half and do little half moons. All right. And then we're gonna add this to, just as it is, to our roasted radishes. Ooh, I hear our cheese. made a very simple um, miso vinaigrette. Just has a, a little bit of miso, some sherry vinegar, um, and olive oil and salt, and a little bit of macerated shallots we were talking about earlier. And this recipe will be also available both on the Nightwood Society webpage as well as Vibrant Valley Farms. So we're just gonna take a little bit, like, you know, a tablespoon or two. Kind of put it all over the place. And then I'm gonna grab that cheese because we're done on the cheese. Oh yeah, beautiful. So we can see the halloumi here, nice and golden, but it's still the same exact as it was like structurally. So it's gonna have a nice texture, but still be kind of nice and grilled and delicious. Right, so we're gonna go ahead and mix up these, and we're gonna uh, season this just a little bit, a little bit of salt. Kind of toss it up. There should be enough acid in your vinaigrette that you won't have to add anything else. So beautiful. That's it, super simple. So we'll throw that into a little bowl and eat that just as it is. And we're gonna garnish it with a little bit of raw scallion top. Yum. Beautiful. A little bit of scallion because why not? Mm -hmm. How else do you like to do radishes for somebody that's a big radish fan? Big radish fan. Um, radishes with butter. Mm -hmm. That's it. Cultured butter, radish, and a little bit of Malden salt. Favorite of all times. Remember when um, we added with some flowers in there last farm? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Woo! Little flowers. You can fancy it up. Um, there's so many different ways to do radishes. Just raw as they are, roasted. Um, I've done them before, like smashed and fried, which is kind of interesting, but. Save that one for the professionals, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but it's super delicious. It's gorgeous. Yeah, all right, cool. So our cheese is ready to go. So we're gonna just take our little plate here and plate it up. A little halloumi. And would you say for people to, if they were using their, doing that at their house, like how, how? You can just put it underneath bro your, your broiler. Bro okay, cool. And it'll, ha it'll achieve the same thing as this. Sweet. So you can kind of see the texture. The cheese is still intact on the bottom, but then nice and grilled. Well, this one's almost got one full, but nice and grilled and Beautiful. caramelized on top. And then the texture is still intact on the bottom. Sweet. 
And it's an interesting, fun cheese to try if yeah. you've never tried it before. You can get this at New Seasons, at Provador. Um, yeah, and delicious. So you're gonna take, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna throw a little bit of this salsa on top. Um, this cheese has been seasoned already with a little bit of, it had a little bit of oil and a little bit of salt on top. So I'm gonna throw, um, this, just cover it in this delicious salad, salsa. And make sure to get some of that oil in there too. Mm. And just eat it all up together. And then because everything's edible, the delicious flowers that we have, um, on top from the pea tendrils and some of the cute little squiggly mm. bits. I love we're just that. Gonna, we're just gonna garnish it with that because you should be able to eat every part of it. So here we have baked halloumi with a pea tendril salsa verde-ish with sunflower seeds and a little bit of flower, pea tendril flowers on top of it. Nice job, Chef, that's yeah. beautiful. Thank you so much, Kara, for- Yes. Hold on, let's stop that one. Yes, we got it, we'll sorry. All right. I love how weird you are. This is good. Yeah, no, it's good. Um, okay, cool. So that is all. These are our dishes that we have today. Beautiful. Thank you so much for inviting me to do this. I hope that everybody gets into it. Remember, don't be afraid of all the olive oil that comes off of um, this sauce into the cheese. It's meant to be just eaten whole and dipped, and it'll be delicious. And something that something that we talk about a lot at the farm as well, along the same lines as what uh, Princess is saying, is that like good olive oil and good salt and just the, you know your solid base ingredients will get you so far, like these are fresh harvested the day you get them. It's most likely that they're gonna speak for themselves. Um, before we got done, I wanted to just check in, like is there anything else you would say? Like I'm looking at a couple things, I'm looking at the salad, make a vinaigrette, put anything on it, put it on a sandwich. Yeah, um, I just do salad plain. I mean, me I'm a big too. fan of just like greens yeah. with just like lemon and olive oil or just greens. You can put any of these things that we just made today exactly. and with your salad on top and cut it and don't be afraid of your greens. You'll get a lot of them, especially in the spring. Um, for example, we were talking last night on the phone about like just trying to get our hearty greens in. Yeah. And I've even put them like as the base of a salsa sometimes just to like put them in there, get our vitamins. Um, yeah. So there's a ton to do. We're so thankful to be here at the Nightwood. Um, I love absolutely all that you do with food, babe. Thanks. Um, and we look forward to a pretty fun season. Yeah, and then feel free to look up on the nightwoodsociety.com's website. We're doing boxes. We have a cool, like, larder that we're trying to cre create and all the beautiful things that we get from Kara's Farm we want to be able to offer to you as well. So stocks and salads and roasted chickens and all the things. So have a look. See. Yeah, and we'll be continuing this conversation. This is, this is what we need right now, and uh, we're excited to have you along the ride.